Thanks, Kathleen. Um, and it, it'll be great to hear your voice uh, as it evolves, give uh, guidance to uh, us as a community. Um, today in the Washington Post, there's a short piece about the early uh, potential success of the USDA efforts to reduce the price of uh, healthy foods. Um, they say the data is not yet out yet, but uh, I'd be keen to get any um, hint previews. And um, I'm particularly interested since um, I'm with a group that has been doing this substantially in South Africa, giving a 25% discount on healthy foods with fairly big shifts in diets, and we'll hear more about it hopefully during the meeting. Um, but what we were unable to achieve, and this is on 350,000 people for two years, was while you could achieve a shift in increased fruit and vegetable consumption and a decline in meat and some dairy, uh, it didn't have much impact on obesity, uh, mainly because the, uh, the portion size issues were not included in the messaging. And I don't know that we've yet got the right formula to address both improving the quality and the quantity of food simultaneously. And I'd love your thoughts about how we might approach addressing both of those issues simultaneously because obviously they're going to be key to addressing obesity concerns. Wow. That's a big question for first thing in the morning. <laughs> I haven't seen the article in the Washington Post, haven't uh, cracked the paper yet today, but um, uh, you raise a lot of issues there. I do think that when we're talking about countries around the world, we're also talking about um, women, who are the agriculturalists, women who are guiding their families, eating choices, women who um, oftentimes are unschooled and lack access to so many different things. So it's really a kind of, in terms of the federal government work that goes on between USAID and USDA together because uh, empowering women has got to be part of that agenda. In terms of um, quality of food and getting people to shift, again, I think you have to go at the earliest possible age and set those dietary patterns early, early, early. And I don't care where we are in the world. People oftentimes ask me, how do you shop? You know, do you live what you preach kind of thing? And then I have to come clean and say my husband does all the grocery shopping <laughs> and the cooking. He's an excellent, excellent cook. But when I do go grocery shopping, I follow his lead, and we shop the perimeters of the store. Um, I buy very little processed food. There's very little processed food ever in my home. Um, that means we're cooking. That means my son, when he comes home from school, what he wants for a snack, raw string beans, um, carrots, uh, because we set them on that trail really early on. So how do we get young people to be thinking about food? You, know, you got all the advertisement, all that jazz. There's still hills to climb. My God, I wrote an editorial in my high school newspaper about vending machines in the school lunchroom. It's 2013. I'm 53 years old and we have a competitive foods rule or snack rule, whatever you want to call it, that's still pending. So these changes take a long time and I find that if we get people really young and we get the right cheerleaders in place, and I don't know exactly how to do that in the global context because that's not my world. I've been largely focused on domestic policy in my life. Um, it can really make a big difference. There's this new organization that some of you may be familiar with called Food Corps. It's an offshoot of AmeriCorps. And we have young people, uh, we get thousands of applications for just you know, a very small number of slots. And people go into the school systems and they're there at the lunch line cheering kids on for the right choices, making the right choices cool, making the right choices exciting. The school lunch ladies, they do well, but they have a lot of work to do. Having that extra person there um, really engaging in conversation about food, I think is going to be shown to be very positive. There are a lot of uh, tests out there now looking, trying to evaluate that intervention. But I, you know, how do we upscale that around this country? How do we bring that in other places? I don't know. But good food right now against all the advertising, against all the onslaught of convenience and processed food, uh, healthy food 
Good ED needs a cheerleader. Thank you very much. <laughs>